volcanoes. New Zealand pretty much sits on volcanoes. There have been 48 eruptions in Auckland over the last 250,000 years, almost one every 5,000 years. Since we are visiting New Zealand, it is good to get some idea about volcanoes and New Zealand's relationship to volcanoes. The Auckland War Memorial Museum and the Museum of New Zealand in Wellington have separate sections on volcanoes. Most of the information in this video is taken from those exhibits. None of the volcanoes in the South Island are currently active. There are three types of volcanoes in the North Island. Volcanic fields. Like under Auckland, small one-off eruptions happen within a big area with little rhyme or reason. Cones or stratovolcanoes like Taranaki with layers of erupted lava rock and ash slowly built into a classic volcano shape. Calderas and domes like Taupo, lava bubbles up and forms hilly domes with some explosions. Every now and then, huge eruptions leave giant holes in the landscape. Eruptions may or may not happen soon, but it will almost certainly happen. There is no way of knowing when it will happen. Cities could be affected not only by local volcanic fields, but eruptions outside the cities. The chances of ash from volcanoes such as Taranaki and Ruapehu Coating Auckland in the next 50 years is between 15% to 60%. Living on an active volcanic field may not sound like a very bright thing to do, but volcanoes are actually a big part of New Zealand's success. From the past, volcanic peaks provided easy lookouts. To Maori, the volcanic hills of Tamaki were ready-made lookouts and easy defendable perfect places for pa or their fortified villages. When Europeans began to settle in Auckland from the 1820s, they too used volcanoes for defense. Volcanic eruptions provide materials for construction. One of Auckland's oldest structures is the wall around the Albert Barracks, which is made out of common volcanic stone, basalt. Basalt was also used to build some of Auckland's first permanent buildings, such as St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church in Simon Street and the Melanesian Mission House at Mission Bay. Volcanic ash, especially from the basalt volcanoes, is rich in many of the minerals that plants need to grow. When Maori arrived in Tamaki, they settled around the volcanoes because their kumara and taro crops thrived in the rich volcanic soils. Little particles of scoria hold water and gradually release it like sponges. Volcanic soils are also easier to prepare and cultivate than place elsewhere. Current New Zealand dairy industry thrives because these soils provide lush green grass fields for the cattle. Interestingly, volcanoes also give Auckland much of its water. Rainwater sweeps through the porous scoria and forms pools where it meets non-porous lava or older clay rich sediments lower down. More than 2,700 cubic meters of water flow through One Tree Hill's lava flows every day and four pumps set on a hunga draw off that water for the city. This recent volcanic activity is primarily due to the country's position on the boundary between the Indo-Australian and the Pacific Plates, a part of the Pacific Ring of Fire and particularly the subduction of the Pacific Plate under the Indo-Australian Plate. 
every few hundred or thousand years a batch of magma breaks off from the hot spots and forces its way up towards a weak place in the earth's crust right under Auckland. The first sign of an impending eruption is ground tremors as the batch of magma rises. Auckland Museum lets you experience what could happen if a new volcano erupted in Auckland's harbour tomorrow. Let's watch a part of that. Volcanic earthquakes will damage buildings as the magma rises and breaks its way through to the surface. The formation of the volcano's crater, corn or debris spring will destroy all infrastructure close to the wind. Shock waves will break windows and flatten weak buildings close to the wind. Base surges, oak lethal ground hugging mixture of steam and solid particles, will within minutes envelop areas up to 5 km from the wind. Fire fountains of lava will set nearby buildings ablaze. Fires could spread underground through buried service networks. Lava flows could travel up to 10 km from the wind. Everything in their path will be burned, crushed or buried. The ash from the eruption column will halt air traffic, bury crops and cause severe distress to those with respiratory problems. Recently, on 8 December 2019, Fakari erupted while 47 visitors were on the White Island, killing 22 people. Ash plumes from Ruapehu's 1996 eruption forced the closure of 11 airports, including Auckland International Airport. The 1886 eruption of Mount Taravera buried the entire Te Wairoa village by volcanic cash. These items displayed in Auckland War Memorial Museum were recovered from the village. This cast of a victim from Pompeii, Italy was created by filling plaster to a cavity found in rocks by excavators almost 1,700 years after the destruction of Pompeii. Fortunately, scientists carefully monitor all of the New Zealand's volcanic activity and the Auckland Regional Council has detailed contingency plans for any volcanic disaster. Seismic monitoring is the most effective way of keeping watch on Auckland's volcanoes. When magma rises towards the Earth's surface, the ground usually vibrates. To find out what is happening deep below, sensitive motion detectors, seismometers, track the arrival time and strength of each wave of energy moving through the ground. Volcanic earthquakes and tremors make different seismic patterns from the normal earthquakes. 800 kilometers above the city, a satellite surveys Auckland with radar as its orbit passes every three months. If the ground has started to bulge even by a few centimeters, the system will notice the difference from the previous reading. Unlike satellites that take pictures, the radar system is cloud-proof. Auckland is particularly good site to monitor via satellite because there is relatively little vegetation to confuse the readings. The same technique known as radar interferometry has potential for also monitoring Taravera, Tongariro and Ruapehu. Volcanoes are responsible for most of New Zealand's geological features, attracting many tourists. Apart from dormant volcanoes like Mount Taranaki, Mount Ruapehu, New Zealand's largest lake, Lake Taupo, which covers 616 square kilometers, fills the caldera formed from an eruption.
geothermal features in Rotorua caused by underground volcanic fields. Over 1.5 million tourists arrived in New Zealand during the last financial year.